This lesson is going to get into just a little more detail on naming hydrocarbons beyond just the root and the ending. All right, so you should be able to, by the end of this video, be able to name molecules such as the one shown here, which has branching and it has possibly double or triple bonds in it. All right, so what's the basic process? We have five different steps that we use to name them. The first one is that we number the carbon atoms in the longest chain which contains the functional group, if there is one. So remember, functional groups are things other than carbon and hydrogen single bonds. All right, so we're going to first identify the longest chain of carbons that contains a functional group. In this molecule, the functional group is an alkene. So the longest chain would be this one, although you actually could go down and have the same length of chain. It would still be five carbons in the chain. Either one is acceptable and will yield the same name. Okay, so then we have to number the carbon atoms. So we're going to say one for that carbon, two, three, four, and five for the carbons in that longest chain. And we start numbering closest to the functional group. Okay, start closest to the functional group. All right, that part we've circled is the root, would have a root and an ending for that chain. Okay, so that's five carbons, that's pent, and the ending would be ene because it's an alkene. All right, so we'll just identify that. Five C's gives you that part, and the ending is because it's an alkene. It ends the N-E. All right, next. If there's a functional group, and there is, the indicate the carbon number where it starts. Okay, so the functional group is an alkene. It's between carbons one and two, which means it starts at carbon one. So we're gonna put a one in front of our pentene to tell us that that double bond is between one and two. If it was between two and three, we'd say two pentene. Or between three and four, we'd say three pentene. All right, so it tells us where in that chain we have a double bond. All right, then substituents. We're gonna add prefixes for substituents in alphabetical order. What are substituents? They're everything that's left over that we haven't circled. Okay, so we have a substituent here and we have another substituent over here. Okay, now the substituents also get named by how many carbons there are. This is a single carbon, so that's meth, and we add a YL ending to the substituent, so that's a methyl group. This one below is two carbons, so that's an ethyl group. Okay, you add the YL ending for substituents. And then we're going to put the substituents in alphabetical order, which means ethyl comes before methyl. And finally, we're going to put numbers on them to show where they are on the chain. Okay, where are they attached to our original chain shown in green? Okay, we numbered the carbons, one, two, three, four, five. The methyl's attached to carbon three, and the ethyl is also attached to carbon three. So the substituents, before I add them to the name, would be three methyl and three ethyl. All right, but now I'm going to add them to the name. Remember, the alphabetical order means the ethyl comes first. So the whole name is going to be 3-ethyl-3-methyl. I'm going to switch and put in the 1-pentene that I already had from above. All right, that is the entire name for that molecule. And the fifth rule just tells you that you use dashes between numbers and letters. So anytime there's a letter and a number, you use dashes and use commas between numbers. We don't have two numbers together in this example, so we won't be using commas yet. But we'll show examples of that on the next page. Okay, and actually on the next page we also have another rule that we will get to on this in these examples below. All right, so the molecule on the left is the one we have already done. And remember, we circled, the first thing we did was circle the longest chain. OK, 
octane, it was five carbons, and the longest chain that contained the functional group. All right, so let's look at this molecule on the right. It's very similar to the one we just did. We circle the longest chain, and it's exactly the same as the one we just did. The difference is in the substituents. We have a methyl on top, like we did before, but now we also have a methyl on the bottom. Okay, so this is where we're going to use rules, uh, rule six, and also the comma. So we have a 3-methyl here and another 3-methyl down here. So instead of saying 3-methyl, three 3-methyl, three we say, put commas and say 3, comma 3, and then use a prefix to show that there's two of them. Di is 2, tri is 3, tetra is 4. So we say di-methyl 1-pentene would be this molecule. So the difference is <clears throat> instead of 3-ethyl-3-methyl, we have 3-comma-3-dimethyl, showing that both of the methyls are on the third carbon. They don't have to be the same number. The two methyls could be somewhere else. It could be 3-comma-4-dimethyl-1-pentene. All right, let's do a few more examples to try to make all this clear. The first example. Let's find the longest chain that contains a functional group. If there is one, there's no functional group here. It's just hydrocarbons. So the longest chain. Okay, so remember that it doesn't matter whether you draw the carbons in one long line or whether you zigzag. The longest chain is the longest chain. You can go any direction you want as long as it's all in one chain. All right, so this there's no substituents. There's nothing outside that chain. So this is simply pentane. Okay, not all the names are complicated. Let's look at the next one. Circle the longest chain that contains the functional group. Well, there's the double bond. I can circle the one that's all in one line, but I could equally well circle this one, and you will get the same answer. They both have four carbons in the chain, and then the substituent is an ethyl. Okay, but let's go back to the chain and number them. Start where the functional group is. One, two, three, four. All right, so let's name the chain and its, its root and ending. So there's four carbons in the chain, which is but and butene, the ending E-N-E -E for alkene. Then we have a methyl group. Oh no, let me say where the alkene is. It's at position one. Okay, if it's between 1 and 2, then you say 1. We say the lower one. Then we have an ethyl on the 2 carbon. The ethyl group's attached to this carbon 2. So we will do our substituent in red and do 2 ethyl and then 1 butene. Remember, dashes between any letters and numbers. Let's do the next final example. Okay, the longest chain would be this one, and your substituents, you have two methyl substituents. Let's number the chain, and in this case it doesn't matter which side we number from, there's no functional group, the substituents are symmetric. So we would do one, two, three, four, or you could start from the other end, do one, two, three, four, you're going to get the same name. Okay, so the root and ending would be but Butane, butane. Um, we don't need a number in front of it because there's no functional group. Then we simply do the substituents. We have two methyl groups, one's at two, one's at three. Two comma three dimethyl, meth, I messed up. Methyl butane. Now we don't need a dash between the methyl and the butane because there's no number. Okay, the dashes only go between numbers. So 2,3-dimethylbutane. All right, there are, there is one for you to try below. So you try naming this. It's not too different from one we have already done. Try that and then check your answer. Okay, longest chain containing the functional group is here. That's five carbons, so that's a pentene. The double bond is between carbons 1 and 2, so it's 1-pentene. And then we have 
two methyl groups. They are both at carbon three. So it's three, three, dimethyl, one pentene, which is exactly the same one we did up above, just that it's drawn differently. But it's the exact same one, same molecule that we did up at the top. Drawn slightly differently. All right, practice those, practice names.